Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new. My name is Jess, I'm half reader, half writer, all bookworm. And in today's video, you're gonna get ready with me while I talk about all the books that I read in August. So August was sort of a mixed bag for me when it came to reading. Um, I started back up at work and so reading kind of took a little bit of a backseat, not as much of a backseat as my writing took. Um, I am taking steps to kind of remedy that in September, um, thankfully, but um, I my goal was to read 10 books. Um, I had nine books on my TBR and then I had one mystery book that I was planning on reading. I ended up reading seven books, um, so I'm just going to run through them. I'm going to go from like my most disappointing read to the read that I enjoyed the most. Um, so yeah. The book that was the most disappointing for me this month, I rated this one three stars. Um, it wasn't great, it wasn't awful, I just wanted more from it. It was actually uh, my All Crate book for July. Yeah, for July, and it's Sleep Like Death by Kaylin Bayron. Um, if you guys have been around for a while, you probably know that Cinderella is Dead by this author is one of my favorite books of all time. It's like the book that got me back into reading. Um, and I've tried several of her books since and I've just come to the conclusion that unfortunately, I don't think she's for me. I'm always kind of left wanting more when it comes to her books. Um, other than Cinderella is Dead, the rest of them, I've just been very underwhelmed by. I think I've read all of her other books except for two. Um, so I've given her like a decent try and I just don't think it's for me. Her writing's for me. It's just, it leaves a little to be desired, um, in the way of like character and there are just things in the plot that just don't really connect. So this is a Sleeping Beauty retelling, um, with like a dash of Rumpelstiltskin. Um, and so we are following the princess. Um, there's this antagonist called the knight and he grants wishes, but they're always like, he kind of takes the wish and turns it to and turns it into something bad. So she finds out that everybody in the kingdom basically knows don't make a deal with the knight. She finds out that one of her mothers has made a deal with the knight. One of her other mothers made a deal with the knight once and got turned into a bird. So her other mother made a deal with the knight that's like a pretty big for something big and significant. And so it's time for the knight to like come collect on his debt. So she's been trained all her life, Eve, the princess, has been trained all her life to uh, defeat the knight. The knight has a son. There's sort of like an enemy to lover situation going on. It's like, it, it has all the makings of a great like epic romantic scene, right? But it just didn't hit. Like there were certain plot holes that never got addressed, characters that were mentioned like once and we never saw again, big like big things that weren't given like the emotional depth that they should have been given and I just was very underwhelmed it wasn't horrible um I would read it again it wasn't you know it was just mid pretty much so hence the three stars um and so yeah I don't know I don't know if I would recommend it um I guess I would recommend it for like um you know, younger reader, not really younger readers, but like if you're fresh to the world of fantasy, like it was really easy to follow and easy to understand. If you're like, you know, a new fantasy reader, I would recommend it. Um, if you just want to read books by black authors, which is always great, I would uh, highly recommend it. I did love um, the whimsical nature of the plot and I do love like some of her word choice in here there were some like really great quotes um and a good like little philosophical um take on good and evil so those are some good points but it was just out of the seven books i read it was the it, it was the one i liked the least moving on the next book um that i liked the next least I don't know the next book that I gave like a lower rating I gave this one three stars as well um Daughter of No World by Carissa Broadbent I was so shocked that I did not like this book because I loved the Crowns of Nyaxia duology like um 
The Serpent and the Wings of Night and The Ashes and the Starcurse King. I loved those books. Um, they were such an inventive world. And I think what happened with this one, the world was just as inventive. Um, I felt like it was like heavy for no reason. Like the book was heavy for no reason. Plus the way Chris of Advent does her world building, um, she kind of, she doesn't really tell you about the world. She lets you kind of like find out about the world as you go, which I do love that style of world building, but you have to do it right. There has to be a balance. You have to give me something familiar. I feel like she didn't give me anything familiar to hold on to. And with the Crowns of Nyaxia, she did do that. Um, she, she gave us like vampires and I understand vampires. We have like all this background knowledge on vampires so it was easy to kind of fall into the world yes she added like different types of vampires and different powers for these different types of vampires and different gods in the world but it's all stuff that i'm familiar with like i can i can go with it it felt like in this one we're following tasana who is an ex-slave she buys her freedom um she has a hard time buying her freedom is all i'm going to say about that and she ends up having to like flee her home for a uh, new country and she wants to join the orders which is like this magical like army i guess um and so she has to train and prove herself she ends up training with max antarius who is this ex high-ranking like general guy and uh he's got this sorted past with the orders that we kind of get glimpses of and get the full story of later because it just seems like he's just unnecessarily rude to her but there's a reason um he thinks that she's making like a huge mistake and he doesn't want her to make it um and uh the whole thing with Riche is just weird to me um I just I just didn't connect to it I didn't like it I was very disappointed because I really wanted to love this so I don't think I'm going to be continuing this series unfortunately um it just kind of fell flat for me it didn't really I didn't I just didn't really connect to the plot or the characters I felt like um it didn't know if it wanted to be like this cozy fantasy or this big epic it kind of just I don't know um so I I just didn't vibe with it so I gave it three stars moving on <laughs> these next three books I'm going to talk about were all four star reads for me so I read my dark desire which is sort of the sequel to my dark romeo it is um they're interconnected standalones i think there's gonna be three of them because they're like these three like playboy billionaire best friends and it's basically all about them falling in love and so i'm thinking they're all gonna follow like a classic love story because the first one followed romeo and dallas and it uh this is the cover of it by the way it's so beautiful um i hard hard down bought this for the cover um and the first one too but it worked out because i actually ended up enjoying the books but um the first one was about romeo and dallas and that one kind of followed the tropes of romeo and juliet this one um is about zach and how do you say her name? pharaoh zach and pharaoh and it followed a uh, sort of a Cinderella story type story with like the wicked stepmom, the evil stepsisters. I annotated this one a lot. There were just so many like funny quotes. As you can see, there were lots, lots of words on this page. Like the margins are very small and there's lots of words on the page. So this took me a while to read. Like I definitely spent the most of my reading time this month on this book. I'm trying to show you like the start pages. They're so gorgeous, but basically, like this is how like each first page of a chapter starts it's so cool so beautiful so much uh lovely detail put into the book but anyways um it's a humorous story uh kind of got dark romance vibes going on but not necessarily a dark romance um it's just like a contemporary romance about a guy who has like some issues because of things in his past he's got like some past trauma and the girl helps him through it same thing he helps her kind of find herself again after a tragedy in her life and it's just a beautiful sweet story it was so fun i loved like all the side characters i love that we got to see dallas and romeo again i love that we got introduced to new side characters we got to see more of um oliver and his book i don't even know i'm kind of uh <clears throat> leery about because he's a character for sure but um I think it'll be a fun read 
um, and it's coming out next year, I believe. So I will be getting that one and completing the trilogy. I really liked it. I liked it more than I expected to. I gave it four stars. It's a cute little fun read if you like romance. Another cute little fun read if you like romance is the Heartstopper graphic novel series. I just read volume four. I loved it. I love Nick and Charlie so, so, so much. The only reason this one is a four star and not a five star for me is because there was a lot of like telling instead of showing. And I think the reason for that is that there's a little like novella that goes like in here somewhere, like it's between things that happen in here. And so the second, a lot of the second half of the book is them recapping things that happen in that novella. Um, but this was a great, beautiful story, really heartwarming. Um, <clears throat> it's not as lighthearted as the other ones just because it deals with a little bit of heavier subject matter, so check trigger warnings for this. Um, but it basically just continues Nick and Charlie's story of them like finding each other, falling in love, and just being there for each other. It's uh, first love, high school love, and I love it so much. Um, I just know that I'm going to go back to this series again and again. And yeah, overall, it's a five star series for me, but that one is uh, four stars. It's the first one of the series that I have not rated five stars, but I still love it. It was still really, really good. Another uh, book that I rated four stars was um, The House Across the Lake by Riley Sager. This is my first Riley Sager book, and it will not be my last because I love the way he, is, he does thrillers, apparently, um, even though it's my first try with his writing. I do already have another Riley Sager book in my Audible library. I have the only one left, which I'm planning on reading this fall, but um, The House Across the Lake is about this like lakefront community where these girls have been going missing. It's this affluent community where like celebrities come to vacation. And so these past three summers, girls have been going missing. The police think they know who is doing it. Um, and so this summer, a high profile woman goes missing. She's an ex-model. Um, her and her husband are staying uh, at the lake house and the police are suspecting her husband for it. We are following sort of this actress who is reeling from the death of her husband and um, we're following her trying to like solve this case. Like she feels invested in this case because her and the model kind of became friendly. So she feels invested in the case and so we are following her and the police sergeant the police chief um the handyman that's working on a couple of houses on the lake um just i don't know we're just following that story as the mystery unfolds it's really cool it's got some magical realism going on and i wonder if all his thrillers are like that i've never seen a thriller with magical realism in it before. I've never read one. So I'm kind of interested if that's a like theme in all of his books, but we shall see. I really enjoyed it. Um, the twists were really good. Like they caught me off guard, especially the one at the end. Um, I love me a good twisty, turny thriller that keeps me on my toes. So highly, highly recommend The House Across the Lake, four stars. I did have two five-star reads this month. I read um Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies um and I read The Prisoner's Throne which is a sequel to The Throwing The Stolen Heir um so The Stolen Heir uh follows Oak from the Folk of the Air trilogy better known as the Cruel Prince trilogy one of my favorite uh stories trilogies of all time and it follows Oak he's all grown up and he's on a mission of his own. The Prisoner's Throne just kind of continues that mission, so I can't really talk too much about it. It basically picks up right where the Stolen Heir left off um, with Rin and Oak and their messy little uh, love and uh, the drama that they got themselves into in the last book and how they're going to find their way back, you know, to some sense of normal, which Toast can't never be bright again. And they're kind of dealing with that. And the families get involved. We get to see more of our favorite characters from uh, the Cruel Prince trilogy. We get to see Jude and Cardin. Uh, we get to see some other people. We get to see uh, Maddox and 
Oriana and we get some hints of Nikasia. I don't like Nikasia, but anyways, we get to see Taryn, which I y'all know y'all know I don't like Taryn. Um, if you've been around here a while, but yeah, we get to see all them. And um, it was just a fun ride. It was just a return to a world that I loved and it was a great story like in its own right. Um, beautiful, lovely lyrical writing, fairy tale on 10, we love it. Um, five stars, easy five stars. And then same thing with Emily Wilde, like this is my first, not my first cozy fantasy, but it's the first cozy fantasy I've ever read that I actually enjoyed. Um, there were, there was just enough action to keep me interested. I loved like the way, um, this author did fairy tale too. Um, it kind of reminded me of Holly Black, um, but not in like the epic court intrigue, stab, stab, kill like situation. Uh, it's more like, um, it reminded me of like a cozy fall afternoon in the library or something like that. It was just like, it was so sweet. There were like hints of romance. There were hints of action. There was found family and um character growth and development and beautiful fairy tale story that um i really enjoyed and i cannot wait to read um book two in the series i think it's going to be a trilogy so um, i'm planning on reading book two uh in september so that concludes this video those are all the books that i read in august um my lowest to highest rated um and yeah let me know if you've read any of these books or let me know what was your favorite book that you read in august and i will catch you in my next one bye